Can these pipes from a Leaf Spring TXL actually work in this IFS cross country indie? I don't know. Let's find out. Really got to get this motor cleaned up before we can drop it in the chassis and check out those pipes. So let's get at that first. So I feel like I should explain how I pulled the motor out of one of my sleds that's this dirty. Um, usually I clean them before I put them in and with the limited use of that sled scene, it shouldn't be dirty at all. Not much anyways. But uh, what happened here is I was doing some friendly grass dragging with some friends and uh, I was trying to, you know, maybe pass this off as a stock motor and a stock sled, just something that had been together forever. Um, you know, just for fun. I mean, there's no money involved or prizes or trophies and everybody was doing stuff like that. You know, hell, there were guys showing up with uh, Big Block Liberty twins under the hood of their, of their old TX. So I was a piker compared to them when it came to cheating, you know, but uh, anyways, so when I got this motor, I did the crank seals without disturbing the, the grease. <laughs> I know, sounds stupid, but that's what I did. And uh, put it in filthy in that rather beat up chassis, but it had even a nastier hood and seat on it. I mean, it totally looked like a barn fine. Everybody was commenting about what barn did I drag that out of and why didn't I clean it? This doesn't look like something I'd normally do. And, you know, then we ran it down the track a few times and it became apparent to everybody what was actually going on there. So I had some fun with it at first, but, uh, you know, people eventually catch on to that kind of thing. and They certainly did. So that's the story of the dirtiest motor in my fleet. I did pressure test it after I did the crank seals. And uh, I don't know, that was five or six years ago when I did these crank seals. I got the motor out, I got the seals sitting here. I might just do it again just to do it, just to be sure. Well, since I got it this far apart, might as well just do the crank seals. So I've got this homemade puller. I just made it out of a slug of steel. Pretty easy to make your own pullers. Highly recommend it. At least it's easy to make your own flywheel puller. So I don't know that I'd make my own clutch puller. Wrong pattern. Where is it? Oh, that's right. All right, blast that off of there.
still fine, but I'm here. All right, little little white lithium grease on the seal lips. And uh, we're on the return side of this trip. Okay, got all these little pins that have to be lined up facing straight up. All right, looking good. Okay, I've used a few different sealers over the years. This is the current one I'm using. Seems to work good. Everything seems to hold up fine with it. Okay, here's my pressure test rig. Uh, the big regu the high pressure regulator, the gauge looks broke, but the, this is the one that matters. This is the low pressure. So I back that high pressure all the way off, and then uh, I'll hook that up to my airline. I'll have the ball valve closed. Got that hooked up. Now I'm going to I'm sure there's nothing crazy going on. Oh, that's annoying. There we go. That fitting doesn't seal worth a crap. So I'm going to dial this up. I don't know, I suppose 12 pounds, 14 pounds, something like that. Twelve and a half. Just pop that off. Doesn't matter that that's off because the ball valve's closed. So we're at just over twelve and a half, and we will come back in a minute or two. All right. There we are. It's moved like a tenth, maybe two tenths, calling it good. Uh, that is just fine. That is certainly a pass on the pressure test. All right, here's how I do the flywheel. So use my top dead center finder, running the engine backwards just below TDC. And I just stuff a rope in there. Please don't tell me I'm going to bend a rod. I'm not going to bend a rod. I'm not going to get the rope caught in the port because I didn't go down that far. All right, that feels pretty locked in there. socket. Set my torque to 60.
All right, I'm back. Sorry, battery went dead on the camera. I put a little bit of a charge in it, but I kept rolling because I'm pretty excited to drop this in and find out how the pipes are going to fit or not fit. So I'll bring you back once this is sitting in the chassis. All things considered, looks pretty reasonable. I do need to throw the hood on and make sure it clears, but uh, without the hood on, it's pretty close. Obviously, I'm going to have to fit this area back here, um, remake this uh, stinger pipe into the stock can, but uh, I, I'm hoping that the hood clears everything else and I don't need to do any major surgery. So I'll bring you back when I know that. Well, this is not good. The hood is way, way hitting on the pipe there. Um, all the way back. All the way back. You can see how far I am from getting the hood to shut. Um, all things considered, I think I'm going to abandon the twin pipes for this year. Maybe in a future year I'll get them to fit. I don't really want to cut up those pipes. I'd rather just make some new pipes from scratch because uh, those are the perfect pipes for a leaf spring sled. So I think the plan is just to put the Y pipe back on, go back to the stock exhaust, get this thing buttoned up. All right, fit check with the stock pipe on there. Seems fine, hood's happy. I'll pop the hood off and show you what's going on underneath. Okay, so stock pipe fits pretty good. Uh, the only thing is the can is really close to the chain case, like touching. So I will have to re-drill the hole over here, get just a little bit of an air gap in there, and I think she'll be fine. I think it'll be just peachy like that. Um, I am going to cut this can open and do the SLP recommended mod where, there, where you drill some extra holes in it. For the life of me, I can't find the picture right now, but uh, if I find it, I'll post a picture. Otherwise, I'll just show you what I'm doing. All right, it's Saturday morning. It's supposed to snow overnight, a couple inches, maybe three. I don't know, maybe only two. But anyways, there'll be some white on the ground when I wake up tomorrow. So I really want to make the push today and get the sled done so that I can do a first ride in the morning. Um, I've decided I'm going to get into this can here and uh, drill the extra holes from the can mod. So I'm going to cut it. I, I'm going to cut it on the outlet side just because it's easier to get to. I can't find the instructions. I don't really know what side to cut it on, but it's only steel. I can always weld it up. So here goes. All right, there we go. All right, I'm totally out in wild guest land here with this, but uh, let's just start drilling. All right, well, that's a three quarter inch hole. I think we're gonna call that good. Should be, uh, should be okay. If it sucks, I'll get a stock uh, leaf spring TX can and I'll cut this tailpipe off and add it to it and just go back to stock. With the can cut apart, it seems like a good time to do some more test fitting.
All right, here's how this can came out. I'm pretty happy with it. I've got some decent clearance from the can to the belly pan. It's got to drill one new hole back there. No big deal. Um, you know, I had springs on it. I had the motor. I had some bolts slipped in place. So feel pretty good about this. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to start cleaning the carbs. And then uh, while well, the carbs are cooking in the ultrasonic, I'm going to start getting the rest of this thing back together. Let's clean some Makuni round slides. Here's my little ultrasonic cleaner. Fits a couple carbs. I could probably get three in there. So uh, I just put stuff in, get it buzzing, and come back in a while. Guess we'll go for 20 minutes. All right, it's been 20 minutes. Ultrasonic's done. Whew, that was fresh solution. Look at it now. Holy cow. So I just kind of rinse everything off. I don't think the ultrasonic solution harms anything, but I just rinse things off as they come out just to get it off of there. Well, that's a pretty Pretty decent looking car body now. Oh yeah, I can live with these. All right, so you can see just from the color of the solution and how filthy it is, it took a lot of stuff off of there, and that was after I sprayed everything down with brake cleaner already. So, I don't know. I, I like the ultrasonic. I think it's the best way to get your carbs clean. All right, we're going to call it there for part six. Part seven, we're going to get the sled running. So uh, be sure to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when part seven comes out. Thanks for watching.